It is Sonoma Race Week, and we thought it would be fun to hop in the time machine and take a look back at the 1992 Save Mart 350 from what was Sears Point Raceway at the time. I'm Kim Kuhn, joined by America's crew chief, Larry Mack. You were crew chiefing this race for Davey Allison. Before we get into the race and throw the green flag on Sonoma, um, it was a little bit somber, a heavy mood that morning because you guys got the news in the garage that Big Bill France had passed away. Take us back to that morning. Yeah, I remember we had been in the garage area for a few hours, and it was maybe a couple of hours before the race, and the, and the word traveled through the garage area that, that Bill France Sr. had passed away. And, you know, it was very somber because I think everybody in that garage area, drivers, crew chief, owners, mechanics, whether you'd been there for a number of years or you were new to the sport, you knew the reason you were able to be there doing what you were doing is because the vision that Bill France Sr. had and it was almost one of those cases where do we really need to race today? But we, w we knew what Big Bill would want us to do, and that's to do exactly what we did and go racing. I have to imagine it would have been extra motivating to be the team to get to victory lane any time we've lost figureheads of the sport. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, and I go back to even after I joined NASCAR on Fox, I remember in 2007 in the spring, it was actually a Monday makeup race. We got rained out at Dover, Delaware. And we got word actually halfway through the race that Bill France Jr. had passed away. I remember him lowering the flag to mm -hmm. half staff in the infield. And uh, you got to believe that those drivers and teams were motivated to go out and, and dedicate a win to Bill France Jr. with what he had done for the sport. And it's actually the day that Martin Truex Jr. got his very first career win. Well, like I mentioned, you were crew chiefing for Davey Allison in the 92 Sonoma race. Ernie Irvin was the one that got the checkered flag. You've also crew chiefed for him. You were there two years later. We're going to be joined by Ernie, but describe him as a driver. So talented. Uh, you know, I worked with a lot of talented race car drivers. I, I mean, sometimes I have to pinch myself to know of all the drivers that I worked with. David Pearson, Dale Earnhardt, Davey Allison, Ricky Rudd. But I've got to say raw talent across the board, no matter what racetrack you went to or what you encountered, his talent was just off the chart. And he always figured things out. You know, he didn't sit out there in the race car and moan and groan and scream about different things. You know, he knew unless we came to pit road, there was nothing we could do until the next yeah. pit stop. He figured things out. He was always thinking about what he could do to make that race car better. Well, we're going to be joined by the winner of the 92 Save Mart 350 during the race. So let's throw the green flag. You, you can't do what he did. Ricky Rudd was actually on the pole. But front Ernie, row. Was Ernie outside. had a front row start. Yeah, front row, but you can't jump the start like he did there. and It wasn't even close. No, not even close. And so we'll get to where Ernie gets black flagged for that move. Uh, if you're going to get black flagged, is it better to do it at a road course where you're not necessarily going to get lapped? Yeah, I mean, it's so long around this two and a half mile road course, Kim. And so, yeah, absolutely. If, it, if it's got to happen, it's probably not a better time than the very start of the race because that gives you the entire race to make it back up. So we're watching the action again from Sonoma Raceway 1992. At the time, you have crew chief for Ernie, but at the time you were calling the shots for Davey Allison. Do you remember anything about like what kind of car you had that day? Yeah, and we had actually won the Sonoma race in 1991. We qualified 10th. I didn't feel like we had a very good race car, but you know, this is the fourth time to go to Sonoma and something I was very proud of heading there. In the first three years, I had actually won the Sonoma race with Ricky Rudd in 1989 and then Davey in 91. Okay, key to winning at Sonoma. It's uh, having a guy that understands this racetrack. There's <laughs> not a lot of grip. I mean, look at these cars, how they're sliding around. And uh, you have to be patiently aggressive because there's just no grip whatsoever. But I'm looking at the two drivers there behind Ernie. Of course, you're going to see Ernie hit pit road for a stop and go penalty. That's two of the best in the business when it comes to road course racing, Ricky Rudd and Rusty Wallace. So back then, you mentioned Ricky Rudd, Rusty Wallace being good at road course racing, but this was still a time where we talked about there being road course ringers or, or the whole field wasn't, I would say, collectively as good 
at racing at road courses like we would say they are now. No, you're you're absolutely right. In the 80s and 90s, we, we really only ran two road courses. You know, we ran Riverside up through 1988. We started going to Watkins Glen in 1986. Then we started going to Sonoma in 1989. And honestly, any time we went to those tracks, I could probably count on one hand and have fingers left over who was going to win the race. It wasn't completely on the driver. With that few road courses, teams just didn't put a lot of effort into it. Different case, like when we head to Sonoma this weekend, there's what? It's as wide open yeah. as the race at Charlotte <laughs> just recently. So let's catch some of the action again. Sonoma Raceway 1992. And we are going to be joined by the winner of this race, Ernie Irvin, at some point during the course of it. I mean, you can see how they're sliding around. And I mean, this is still very early in the race. Ernie's made his stop and go penalty. Uh, and he's got a lot of ground to make up. You know, uh, I heard him say, you know, Tony Glover, his crew chief, which I've known Tony for years, trying to keep Ernie calm. Well, I know Tony pretty well. I was wondering who was good keeping <laughs> Tony calm. So you said to be good at Sonoma, or even road courses in general, you had to be patient, patiently aggressive. Which drivers do you put in that category back in 1992? Ricky Rudd. You know, Ricky Rudd was so smooth. You know, you, you would watch a race car that Ricky Rudd would drive. And again, I was fortunate enough to, my first two wins came with Ricky Rudd at Watkins Glen in 88, Sonoma in 89. And you'd watch the race car, and if you didn't have a stopwatch, you'd go, he's not going anywhere because the car wasn't all laid over and yeah. out of control and sliding. He just was so smooth with everything about driving a car on a road course, but he was always fast. And the 66 car is all by himself out there, right running now. well behind the rest of the field. As you can see, it moves up through turn number four there. Always good at road courses, always really fast at Watkins Glen. You can be a little more aggressive at Watkins Glen because the track has more grip than Sonoma. And this is not the course that they are racing this weekend. You, you know, we ran this course for years, and then we went to the short course where they did away with what we call the carousel. This is what the, this is the carousel. It's just a left-hander that just keeps on going, and then you come out on the drag strip, and you go up to what we used to call the keyhole, which mm -hmm. is turn seven up there, and then they sh did the shortcut from turn five to turn seven, and in 2019, Kim, they brought it back, and I was excited because I felt like it created a lot more passing zones. Yeah. It just didn't do it, and now we're back to the short course again. Bob, uh, because the turn is so flat, and here is Greg Sachs with the problem. Uh -oh. There was a, Greg a problem Sachs, up in that's the name four. from the past, Her didn't tangled with someone up Helen's there, and he's car having a little trouble. Around. He's back at the back of the pack now, but he did get going again. Greg Sachs going very. You know, one thing we're going to see in this race, and I always kind of like this. And it's what they would call local cautions. Mm -hmm. If there was just a car stalled in one area of the racetrack, there was a corner worker that would just throw a yellow, and you just knew in that area to slow down, mm -hmm. to, to you know be careful through there. Uh, we did away with local cautions. Now it's either a full course caution yeah. or no caution whatsoever. But I always kind of like the local cautions at a road course. So current top five, Ricky Rudd, Rusty Wallace, oh, and it flips. This is not good, Kim. All right, all right. So <laughs> this is your car. We've got Davey Allison. He has caused the first caution. You are the crew chief here. It's funny. You weren't in here. We, we did a look back at the last North Wilkesboro race with Kyle Petty, and you were fiery during that race. <laughs> On pit road, arguing with the officials. Um, we see you right there. Blondie. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more blonde hair, too, yeah. I might add. Yeah, we came into Sonoma as the points leader, and uh, it just got away from him. And uh, a lot of damage you see there to the right rear. You're going to see a lot of damage to the left rear. We're going to go into the deck lid, try to fix the quarter panel there. Just Again, we got a good qualifying run in, but we just were not very good in practice. And Davey was not a big fan of the road course races, even though we won the 1991 Sonoma race. Mm -hmm. Both left side tires, the left rear tire particularly flat spotted from that spin in contact over there with the wall. Davey Allison sitting very patiently. One of the advantages of being on a road course, you can be in the pits for a lengthy period of time. Yeah, we're going to end up finishing at the oh. end of the day, ended up finishing like 30th something, or probably one or two laps down. Just still a long way to go. You're going to see it right here. This just Ooh. shows you how easy 
a car can get away from a driver. There's yeah. just absolutely no grip whatsoever. The old, the old tire walls, those things, you would think tires would not do a lot of damage, but those tires do a ton of damage. A ton. Well, it looks like he's back on the racetrack now. <laughs> Yeah, it, uh, you hate when that happens, it's that early in the race because you know it's going to be a long day, mm -hmm. a long day. So our first caution of the day is out as we have completed now eight laps of this race. Okay. Looks like, again, we're going to be joined by Irving Irvin here shortly. Make sure we get him dialed up. He is joining us remotely. Won this race. Won this race again. In 94. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd were pretty much owning the road courses in the late 80s and early 90s. But in 1991, Ernie Irvin won Watkins Glen mm -hmm. and then came back here to yeah, back, back it up. To back. back to back road course wins. Look at, uh, look at this. Look at all the crew members. You actually have a, a guy that takes the lugs loose on the left side. So you've actually got three air wrenches across pit road. Wild. What else do you notice when you're watching these pit stops? What else is like alarmingly different to you? How slow they are. Well, that. <laughs> How slow they are. I mean, 12 seconds on the right side. Oof. So you're going to see pit stops up in the 20 something seconds. I mean, there's Earnhardt, you know, one of the fastest pit crews in the business back in the 90s. Oh, we had a tire just going out of it. I guess it didn't matter at that point. You just left them. No, no, <laughs> n not near the pit road rules that we have today. But you see most of the, the leaders pitted. But I know Alan Kowicki, of course, who went on to win yeah. the championship in 1992, yep. Paul Andrews, his crew chief, he left, he left Kowicki out. What Paul do, did at a road course back then is he just raced – the strategy, mm -hmm. you know, a 74 lap race, you could go about 28 laps on fuel. He just broke it up into thirds. He didn't worry about what other people were doing. And with that, we're going to welcome in Ernie Irvin. Ernie, can you hear us? I can hear you really good. Awesome. Well, Kim Kuhn alongside a guy you know very well, Larry McReynolds. <laughs> we're looking back at the 1992, at that time, Sears Point Raceway race. Uh, Cup Series headed to Sonoma Raceway, and we are just trying to wonder how you got through the field after being black flagged. I haven't figured that out yet either. So uh, <laughs> it was just, I mean, it was just everything ended up right. Um, I mean, I passed the right cars, and cautions came out right. I mean, I don't know exactly um, all the situation, but um, I, I kind of remember the race. Um, I remember um, uh, being able to pass a lot of cars really easy. So, Ernie, did you know you had jumped the start when the green flag waved? Because, buddy, it wasn't even close. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. The, the only reason that I got supposedly black flag for jumping the start was Ricky Rudd did not go. <laughs> But you so, know back then you still could not beat the leader to the to the start finish line on the initial start. Well, I didn't know that, but <laughs> obviously At this point in the race we have Kowicki winning again or leading again. He went on to win the championship. Uh, we're working our way through the laps here at Sonoma Raceway. You still haven't at this point cracked the top ten after your black flag, Ernie. Um, but you were originally from Salinas, California. What would it, or what did it mean when you won here in essentially what was your kind of home track? Well, I mean, that's the closest racetrack that, you know, was uh, close to Salinas. Um, it, was just, it was pretty awesome to be able to go there. A lot of people I knew from the West Coast and Southern California um, and being able to, you know, you know, to talk to them and be able to, you know, be kind of at my home track. And then, then also winning. So that also made it better. Ernie, did you ever believe that being black flagged on the initial start, that what was your confidence level that you maybe could get back to the front of this thing? I mean, it is a road course. You really don't want to know exactly all the things that I said. <laughs> um, 
because that's not on um, <laughs> um, you know public TV. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, I mean, I never never thought I'd ever be able to come from the back and to the front. I'm not exactly sure how it all, the whole situation, you know, come about. I mean, I know that um, I was black flagged and um, I was able to, you know, and then the, the, the worst thing is, is, um, and you and Tony Glover can speak for this because I got it stuck in two gears with, um, with, when I went to the pits and came out and it got stuck in two gears oh, wow. and I had to ride around for like five laps. And then a caution came out, and then we come in and, and uh, got it got it out of, you know into neutral. Wow. The leaderboard has started to circle through. You are at this point 16th. I don't have a lap count for uh, the current lap, but I think we're closing in yeah. on the third mark. Yeah, one third mark. Yeah, I'm not real sure how I did it, but it sounds good anyway. Well, that's the thing that's amazing. But, but Ernie, I told Kim, I, I remember practice. I know Rudd sat on the pole, you sat on the outside pole, but your car was mighty, mighty fast in practice. I mean, you, you had what it took, but it was a race that only had three cautions. Yeah, I mean, I really didn't even know that I could drive a road course very good at all. Um, and, you know, Tony Glover always told me, said, you don't, you don't understand, when you get in my car, one of my cars um, at, Day at Daytona or Talladega and all the road courses, he said, You're, it's going to be so much easier than you used to have it. And, and he was exactly right. And um, I, I ended up from a mediocre, you know, road course driver and then got in something really good and was able to, you know, um, uh, keep the speed up and we were able to um, be able to win races on a road course. Oh, I told Kim two years after this win right here, you made a believer out of me in 1994 at Sonoma. I spent most of the race just trying to <laughs> slow you down because you had such a lead. It's like, we don't have to beat them this bad. We just need to beat them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I remember that that car, I mean, you know, the, 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 the Kodak car was really good. And I remember that the um, 28 car when we were with Texaco car, it was like unbelievable. I mean, I it was. I mean, I, I remember the one thing that I said during the race. I was over. We were down in, I think, turn nine. You know, the the real sharp corner. And um, I told you. I told. I think. I think I come on the radio. I says, "Hey, watch this." <laughs> and so I just crossed Dernhardt over and and just drove right by him and and was gone. And and so I kind of remember that. And um, it's just. It's just because how good the car was. You know, when all this came oh, down, oh. one thing that, that, again, again, I was a competitor with a 28 yeah. car, knew he had a fast race car, but he's going to have to go back by the likes of Rusty Wallace, of Terry Labonte, mm -hmm. of Ricky Rudd. To me, that's, that's where it was going to be a pretty vertical mountain, but that just goes to show you how fast of a car he had. So See, the, local, that was a local, local caution, caution right there. Mike yeah. Chase bringing out the local <laughs> caution. I saw myself go by. Yeah, you, you're starting to get more and more in the picture. The deeper in this race we go, there is no um, doubt. That's my front end right there. Yeah, there, there's a full court, full course caution. So, uh, yeah, this just every time we had one of these, that just lets you catch up just a little bit more. But there uh, weren't that a, lot. a lot more. Yeah, and the, but there weren't yeah. a lot of cautions three, for the three day. Total, three. Yeah. So it looks like Rusty leading him down. Yeah, I think all the leaders are pretty much pitting right here because I think the timing of this caution, how many green flag laps we had run. You know, Rusty's crew always so good, but I went back and watched this clip last night. This is not going to be a good pit no, stop no. at all. There's Kawicki, Alan Kawicki. Hooters car looks so good. Allen was just one of those drivers. He just wanted to survive the road courses. Uh -huh. Just get me through them and let me get enough points to get out of here. What would he say, and, and Ernie too, what do you say about the fact that now the Cup Series runs six or seven road courses a season? 
I mean, I don't know if I'd like that or not, but um, uh, I mean, even after my accident, I had a lot of trouble on the road courses, and I think it was more the head injury, and um, I mean, it was real, real hard for me to run the road courses, and um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got to run at the time and was able to win some races, and um, we have really good cars. So, Ernie, I'm sure you were mad and saying some things when you jumped the start and got black flag. I would say Rusty Wallace yeah. is probably have a lot more to say at a 52.6 second pit stop, and they didn't get the right front tire no. even changed. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so that, that right there probably helped you as well, because I know this is going to catapult you in front of that two car. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, because Rusty was one of the best on the road courses, and um, I never realized... Um, that he had troubles like that. Um, I just thought that I, that our pit crew beat him, so um, it was it was good. Yeah, they couldn't get the right front tire off, and again, they he left with three fresh tires and still the Oof. older right front tire. Oh wow! Probably not good. No, not ideal. No, that, and he wasn't going to be able to outrun very many people with a an old right front. No. Not at and all. The, the interesting thing about pit road at this time is they only could fit 34 of the teams in the stall, the main section of stalls. Yeah, and so the, the, the timeline of, of pit road at, at Sears Point, what was in now Sonoma, is when we first went there, part of the pits were actually up in the garage area behind the okay. haulers. And then they created what we called, this is a Ron Hornaday right there. Can you believe he's in this sure. race? But then they created what we called Gilligan's Island. Okay. Out there in the middle of where turn 11 was, the okay. horseshoe. Yep. And if you qualified bad, it was pretty humiliating when you were out there because all of us, we'd sit there and wave to everybody wave. that was out there. Oh. <laughs> and it, the pit road was so short out there that once you made your pit stop, the official would stand in front of the car and hold you an additional so many seconds where it would really? be even to the longer pit road on the regular pit road huh. on the other side of the track. It was, it was pretty humiliating. Yeah, I, I kind of remember I was glad I didn't get on the Gilligan's <laughs> Island. So we have Bill Elliott leading, Terry Labonte in second. Somebody spinning. Yeah, that's Dale Jarrett. There yeah, you go. Dale Jarrett in the Joe Gibbs car. The the very first year, year of Joe Gibbs yeah. racing. Yep. I don't think Dale Jarrett liked the road courses. Not a big fan. <laughs> Not a big fan. <laughs> Looks like he may have got a Ooh. help from uh, maybe old Brett Bodine there in the 26 car. This, th to me, this is classic road course racing because whether it was Watkins Glen, Riverside, Sonoma, all the ones we go to now, everything's kind of calm. And then the spotter or crew chief comes on the radio and tells the driver there's 10 to go mm -hmm. and the wires just start sparking inside the helmet. They just start driving all over the top of each other. Oh, gosh. It's, that's exactly what it is now. <laughs> it's no different. It's no different. They hadn't changed. <laughs> Has not changed. You can't drive no. around them, just drive through them. Drive through them. Well, you know, sometimes you got to move them a little bit. Ernie, is there anybody in the current cup field that you kind of see that has the same spark you had when you were racing? Uh, you know, I mean, there's about, about 90% of them Basically, I mean, they they are on it, and they they love their racing. And um, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I used to compare myself to Kyle Busch um, because Kyle was really good. And um, I mean, I, I just felt like, man, he's he's uh, he gets after it just like I did. So um, and then also then he drove the M and M's car. So um, so we had a little bit in common. I guess I could ask you, since well, you were his crew chief. While he was talking and just thinking, and I hope Ernie takes this as a compliment, Kyle Larson reminds me a lot of Ernie wow. Irvin. Because Ernie Irvin, I told you this earlier, he would adapt. He mm -hmm. would figure things out. When that race car wasn't at its best, he didn't sit out there and just moan and groan and complain mm -hmm. because he knew until the next pit stop there was nothing we could do about it. So he would search around. And the thing I always admired about Ernie in practice, he never told me after practice the car is perfect because he would drive a car down in a corner till it did something. Mm -hmm. And then we'd go to work on it. Now in the race, he'd do what he needed to do. But, but the man, 
it didn't matter what kind of race car, truck, what type of track, he figured it out. You take that? You like being compared to Kyle Larson, Ernie? You're both from California. <laughs> yeah, you're both from Northern California. That's a great point. That's a, that's a pretty awesome deal because Kyle Larson is, is one of the best I've ever seen. Well, we have, we're seeing now that you have now cracked the yeah. top ten and you're still picking them up and laying them down. And here's another guy that was going to be a pretty good competitor that day, but things kind of went south for a name Ooh. from the past, Wally Dolan, back in that 16th. Yeah. And he was more of a ringer type guy. Yeah, now he was running the full schedule now. This, this was but, for but Jack But they looked, at, they looked yes, at him no like doubt, he yeah. was going to be. Absolutely. Look how young he is. Like <laughs> What's he was, that? What was that? Uh, I, the, the picture that came up, oh, Wally, how young Wally he looked is. like he was 12 years old. <laughs> And he just kind of did this on his own, just spun on his own, and then it gets it gets hung up on those rumble strips. These poor guys trying to push that car. I don't think no, that's going to work. No, that's not going to happen. They're trying, though. No. Oh, look. <laughs> now, this stuck. looks like America's Funniest Home Videos, them trying to push the car. Yeah, I think we're going to get another yeah. caution here. And then he's spinning the tires. Because <laughs> they're off the ground. Yeah. So third, yeah. third and final caution. So this is going to give... Ernie, the opportunity to gain even more ground. See him back there right now. Looks like about six or seven. I tell you what, that's another good road racer right there in that 94 car. Terry Labonte was always good, especially oh, yeah. at Riverside, California. Always good on the road courses. Yep. Terry. That's all the heavy hitters up there right now. I mean, even old, old Bill, remember, he got his first road course win at Riverside, California in 1983, pretty solid road racer. Yeah. I, I remember racing at Riverside. Um, actually, you know, before before I raced Cup, I ran Riverside. And then also ran Laguna Seca. Oh, wow. You know, you know Winston uh, West Car. Laguna Seca is a cool course. You uh, you about to get door to door with you with one of your best buddies here, yeah, Earnhardt again. Look like you yeah. might be about seventh at yeah. this point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, yeah your, there's, your top, there's your top yeah. five. Top five right there. Yep, seventh. So it looks like Ernie may have frozen his uh, connection, but we're going to continue watching the race. We'll see if we can get him booted back up. But it's always cool to get a driver's insight on a race that they won. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. And then he just went by Earnhardt in that three car, so that's going to move him inside the top five. And the, the laps are definitely winding down. There you see a poor 28 car back oh. in 30th right now. Just not a good day. And you said you guys were leading the points headed we into We were that? headed into snow. I still, I think, because we had a pretty decent points lead, I think we, we still left there with the points lead. But this was, remember, this is when you got five points yeah. for leading a lap, five points All for the, leading the yeah. most laps. There were a lot of way to get points. And I think there. at this point I had looked, I don't even think Kowicki was in the top five in points at that point. Yeah. Because I, I think I, I was shocked. Think I think so. I went back and looked and knowing he had won the championship that year was kind of surprised to see that he wasn't even top five at that point in the season. Now at this point here, we spun ahead a little bit. But Ernie's already taken the lead in Labonte in that 94 car is running second to him. Okay, so three laps to go. We finally got a lap count. <laughs> We're down to three to go, Ernie, and you've uh, you finally got the lead and starting to stretch it out on Terry Labonte, it looks like. Well, I mean, it was, uh, it, it was obviously um, something that set my mind to trying to get from the back to the front, and um, I was pretty lucky. So Rusty had a, had a real but hard that's, time. That's quite a recovery, though, yeah. to get back to the top ten after a 50-something second pit yeah. stop. Beating yeah. on the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rusty was, Rusty was one of the best. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Is, like I say, the, this is where course. the wires start sparking inside the helmets. 
Yeah, Earnhardt, he had, he had really been on a roll these last few races. He was definitely starting to make a march in the points, starting to click those top fives, those top tens off. That's what Earnhardt was really good at. Start, start to come to life there in, uh, in late spring, early summer. There you see he can get off. That's, that's up there in what I, we used to call the keyhole, turn seven, before you come back down through the S's. It's amazing the, the technology we have now in bringing the races to the fans versus back in 1992 in terms of, you know, through the course of this race, if this was present day, we would have seen exactly how Ernie had made his way through. Well, and yeah, I mean, think about it. 31 years yeah. ago, Brett Bodine, he was running inside the top 10 in the 26 car, and he gets spun out. I think you're going to see there's maybe a little brotherly love here with some okay. brother synchronized spinning <laughs> between <laughs> Brett and Jeff Bodine. Oh. There's Wally again. Oh, poor Wally. But you're right, Kim. You know, I actually got a little frustrated watching this last night because I wanted to really try to keep up mm -hmm. with the progression that Ernie was making. Yeah. And, you know, now we're used to that scroll across scroll, the top of the screen. Scroll, and they'll do a look back. 31 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a look back at how they got there kind of thing. And Yes, Jeff in the 15 car, Bud Moore's car. Ernie's starting to stretch it out now. And I guarantee you, Tony is doing exactly what I did two years later. Uh, Bud, you can back yeah. it down just a little bit. You got nobody in your rear view. It's like telling a dog not to bark. Well, that's what they paid me for. Go fast. Oh, I, I know. I guarantee you. Did you ever believe, Ernie, you, you said it earlier about road course racing. I, I mean, two of your first four career wins came on road courses. Watkins Glen in 91 and then back-to-back -back Sonoma in 92. Uh, I mean, like, like I said, you know, Tony um, Glover, he had said, he said, man, you've never drove one of my road course cars. And he said, when you get in that, you're going to think it's a lot easier than, you know, one of DK's cars because he didn't have you know, a whole lot of money, not a whole lot of people around it. So, and it, and it was, it was like, I, I attacked the road courses just like a short track. And I you're mean, doing I that. Did, yeah, I, exactly I, here. We're watching you. The la I so treated last it just lap. like that. Yeah. This is the last lap, Ernie. We saw the Kodak crew primed on the wall to possibly celebrate. Uh, what, do you remember what you were thinking in this moment? I don't really remember. Um, I, can, I can think now what I was thinking probably. Um, I mean, obviously, it's like it's just being able to get it done and hopefully get to the checkered flag without a problem. You know, the thing about back then, if you had a caution probably with three or four to go, as long as your car would make it around there for the next few caution mm -hmm. laps, we didn't have any overtime. We yeah. didn't have anything like yeah. that green-white checkers. The race could absolutely end under caution. Yeah, they, they've made it so much better now than for the fans. You know, when they leave on, leave on Sunday, they know who won the race. I mean, just smooth as he Ooh. can be. Just so smooth. And the checkered flag waves. Ernie getting his fourth career win. Ernie, do you kind of hold your breath? There's the Kodak crew celebrating. Uh, did you find yourself in the moments you knew you were about to take the checkered flag almost holding your breath? Uh, I, I'm, I can imagine what I was doing. Um, I mean, obviously, <laughs> just wanting to make it to, to the checkered flag. Um, I mean, I hope I was tired, um, but it, um, it was, it was a great race. <laughs> Ernie's already crossed the start finish line and well up the hill and they're still racing yeah. for position here. It's Tommy Kendall. Now that was definitely a road course ringer that did not run. Yep. I don't know that he hardly ran anything but the road courses. Yeah. So final thoughts, Ernie, on the 1992 Save Mart 350. Well, I mean, I really think that that, you know, was a, um, a jump to my career. And, 
not one in the not only one of the Daytona 500, but then it showed that I could run a road course and be able to be competitive and win. Yeah, you think about it. His first four wins. Bristol, a short track, the Daytona 500, which I think when he won the 500, he didn't realize really what he had done. Yeah. He had won the Daytona 500 <laughs> and then two road course races. Well, Ernie, we appreciate the insight. Uh, so fun to look back at the 1992 Sonoma race. You are such a blessing to the sport. 15-time Cup Series winner, one of NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers. So we appreciate you looking back on this race with us. Well, I appreciate um, you guys all remembering it and – being able to come on and, uh, and talk about it. So we're going to get a look at uh, the final moments of this afternoon. Final thoughts from you, Larry, as, as we looked back at this race. Gosh, it, it, it brought back so many memories. Of course, it was not a good race for the 28 car and Davey Allison. Uh, but to go back and, and see how the racing was back then, our, only our fourth time mm -hmm. to be at Sears Point that we called it back then. And uh, to know I was fortunate enough to, to win there three times with three different drivers, including Ernie Irvin in 1994, brings back some great memories. Great memories. So much fun to look back. And we look forward to some great racing action this weekend from Sonoma Raceway. Fans, don't forget to tune in to the Toyota Save Mart 350 Sunday, June 11th, 3.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Good race car. I don't know how we did it, but we did you ran, uh, it was unbelievable the way you were able to run them down and pick them off one by one. The, the last few laps, did you get a little over anxious maybe going after uh, Terry Labonte? Well, I got the thing that heated up the rear tires real bad, but, you know, Terry was running off hard too, so he's heating his up. You know, um, it, it's a shame, you know, we lost um, Bill French Sr. this morning, and um, I went to, it seems like every time I win a race, we're going to dedicate it to somebody. I want to dedicate it to him. He's the founder of NASCAR, and if one for him, I couldn't be doing what I'm doing today. It has to be especially rewarding winning one out here in front of the home folks out here near Modesto, California. It is. You know, there's a lot of California people here, and this just goes to show you can come from California and win on the East Coast, and you come back to California and win in California. I want all the Kodak, Chevrolet, Delco, Remy, and all the guys on my crew, they did me a great job. Ernie Urban picking up his first win of 1992. And the celebrations will begin now in Victory Lane as Ernie Irvin wins his first of the 1992 season and his 